Hey GED students, I had someone send me a question on squaring binomials. Um, they had the big problem that most GED students have, so this is a great one to do. So most students assume that squaring is going to work like multiplying in um, the world of algebra and it is going to pass out. You know, like, um, let me just pull up a different color. Imagine if I had a number right here uh, multiplying this expression. You guys are used to just passing it out. So you think squaring is going to behave the same way. It's going to pass out over addition. Um, but uh, you're wrong. Okay. So let me just write it in red so you can see the most common GED student error. This is what they do. They look at this 4P minus 1 and they go, hey, I'll just square the 4P and get 16P squared. And I'll just square the minus 1 and get plus 1. And I must be done. Woohoo! they get so excited. Uh, yeah, in order to see why this is not correct, let's go ahead and use our old favorite expanded form. Remember that anything that's written with an exponent can be rewritten using expanded form, repeated multiplication. So what does this expression say? It says take all of 4p minus 1 and multiply it by itself. So like 2 4p minus 1's multiplying. So if I write it out in expanded form, this is what I get. A 4p minus 1 squared is the same as uh, the quantity of 4p minus 1 times the quantity of 4p minus 1. And remember the basic rule of multiplication, and that is everything's going to multiply with everything. Multiplication passes out. Some of y'all's teachers taught this uh, using the abbreviation FOIL, but basically I have to take everything in the first parentheses and multiply it by everything in the second parentheses. So let's start. 4p times 4p. Now I agree with you that 4 times 4 is 16. And p times p is p squared. So that was super nice. Uh, we matched that there. But careful, you have to keep passing it out. 4p times negative 1 would be negative 4p. Now we finish passing out the first 4p, time to now multiply out the negative 1. Remember when multiplying, you treat that like a negative number. So negative 1 times 4p is negative 4p, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So you can see I did end up with that positive 1 term like you did, but what you missed out on were the two inner terms because you didn't write it out in expanded form. Um, students who don't write it out in expanded form tend to make errors. Okay, so there's only one p squared term, so I'll just drop him, 16 p squared. Now remember, I can combine like terms. If I'm already in debt, 4p, and then I go and spend another 4p's, think of p's like they were dollars, so I'm already in debt, 4, and then I spend 4 more. Now I'm in debt, 8, I owe somebody 8 p's in this case. And then there's only the one constant, the plus 1, and so I'll just drop it, and that is my final answer. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.